we have a hope. Amen? And uh, so, um, in, in life, um, it's, it's very interesting, this question, what is something you are hoping for right now? Of course, we, I would like to say there are two different kind of hopes. There is the, like, the horizontal hope, which we wish things get better. Maybe in our job, maybe in our finances, maybe in the relationships with our family, friends, neighbor. Maybe we have some problems with the neighbor. And, uh, well, you hope someday it will get better. Or maybe you hope being better at school or whatever you do. That's, that's normal and that's, that's fine. But that does not change the circumstances. And uh, there is another kind of hope. There is a hope when we wait God's intervention. And we know God is taking care of our lives. He never abandoned us. So we have that kind of expectation, that hope of God's intervention. So there are basically two, if I can say that in a very broad way, there are two different types of hope. The human one, which is fine, it's not wrong. But we, we wish the things change to cease to see our hope to be fulfilled. But the hope, the biblical hope, perhaps does not need to change the circumstances because our hope is in God. Regardless if the things are not changed. So today as uh, we, we just line up one candle the, on this advent, 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 and um, we are going to talk about the hope, and the biblical hope isn't hoping for better circumstances, it's waiting for God himself to show up right in the middle of all that stuff. It, that's why we are reminded in Psalm 42, 5, why, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. Life sometimes, or let's say most of the time, is tough. Brings sorrow, worries, sadness. And we cannot, and I believe this is a good time to be reminded. That, and that's what, what the psalmist did. Oh man, so many things bring sadness to this life. But you know what? I will put my hope in God. He has the final say. Amen? God has the final say. Not the circumstances. Not the problems. God has. And when we think about Christmas, we talk about a teenager girl when God show up actually by the angels, send the message. And we are going just to go through this, this text in Luke 1, 26 to 35, just to, just to try to see God's bringing hope to people. So the text says, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary, 
she was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph and descendant, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. God, you will conceive and give a birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will, will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor, David. And he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. She, she was very troubled, for sure. First, an angel show up and said, second, you are going to be pregnant with, with a, a amazing King who is going to reign forever. Look, this is all crazy. And the angel reply, the Holy Spirit. This is another crazy thing, right? To say to this girl, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy. And he will be called the Son of God. What more your uh, what's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her six months. So it was kind of uh, impossible for Elizabeth to be pregnant, and the angel just tried to make a point, you know? You know, Elizabeth, that was hard. That was almost impossible. Well, for verse 37, for the word of God will never fail. So the message the angel was bringing to Mary was true and he was going to happen. Mary responded, and that is the point I want to come to arrive. The Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Um, Mary just surrendered her life to the message of the Lord. Mary, I believe she has a very good understanding about who God is. And she decided, okay, God's will is is his best for my life. It's crazy a angel show up. It's crazy the message the angel told me. But you know what? I know God is good. And I'm going just to trust in him, in his plan to my life. So, I love what Ali, I believe that's the way you say her name, Ali Patterson said, the hope that Jesus bring, brings doesn't require you to see any light at the end of the tunnel. I find it so beautiful, this, 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 this quotation. 
The hope that Jesus brings does not require you to see any light. Because he's so compassionate, so merciful, so perfect. I, I cannot doubt. I just needed to accept. Because from his hand comes good things. That's what I know. And this, regardless of the darkness perhaps we are going through today or tomorrow or yesterday, when we have a hope in Jesus, we do not need to see any light in the end of the tunnel. He is with us. Um, well, Mary, she make a, a, a decision. Um, I, do we want God's plan in our or our own? A actually, Mary could say, Oh, angel Gabriel, thank you, but no thanks. I'm not available. But for some reason, Mary once saw the angel and saw the message. She understood God's plans, even though she was not understanding why. She trusted in God. She put her hope in his plan, not in her plan. So, do we want God's plan or our plan? Is our hope really in him? Or it's simply in the change of our the circumstances? Uh, sometimes... Uh, Really, um, I, Tanya lost her job in March. Was not her plan, was not her fault, and I will need to say was not the company, the business desire. And we, we make a decision. God has something on this. And when we have this hope, of God's control that brings peace to our heart and joy. Because I'm not, I just want to say it, it's a matter of a decision. We decided to trust and hope the Lord has something. And that is very important for us and for all of us. So Psalm 62, 5 is yes. My soul finds rest in God. My hope comes from Him. So this is a reminder. We can have our expectations, our hopes in this world. But what is going to bring peace and joy in times of difficult is when we put our hope in the Lord. Psalm 50. 25.5 says, lead me by your truth and teach me, for you are the God who saves me. All day long I put my hope in you. Every moment. The psalmist said, oh, when my mind is started to worry or, or going, sadness is started to, to take to transform my heart, to doubt comes. The psalmist said, lead me to your truth and teach me, for you are the God who saves me. All day long I put my hope in you. I remind me, God is in charge. God knows better. Isaiah 55, 9 remind us a very important thing. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. 
and my thoughts than your thoughts. Let's put in perspective here. Michael, young guy, serve of the Lord. How we need the church needs preachers. And now he's in God. God decide to take him home. Well, I need to trust God's. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. Let's trust in the Lord. He knows better. I cannot understand. It's not make sense. It's going against my desires. But God is in the throne. The Almighty has everything control, and He wishes, and He wishes my outmost best. Don't doubt about that. He has. He is our Father in heaven. For me, that's big. Because I lost my father when I was 20 years old. And to say my father in heaven is going to take care of you, bring peace to me and joy. Revelation 1.8 says, Jesus, I am the Alpha, the Omega. If you don't know what that means, the Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet, and omega is the last one. So Jesus saying, I am the alpha, the omega, says the Lord God who is, and who was, and who is to come, the almighty This is the biblical hope. Brings peace and joy. I hope this time we are reminded and preparing our heart to, to deal with the situations in life. I hope you are not rely, and this is my last point here, I don't you you go beyond of a human perspective, a human hope. I wish this. I wish that, especially this time of the year, right? Christmas. Oh, I wish this gift. I wish this. I wish this. This is hoping. This is, is, is this level. That's fine. But I hope every one of us could experience the hope we have in the Lord. Because when we have that hope, peace and joy will take over, regardless of the situation. And we can have hope in Him. It's just asking, it's just inviting. Let's pray. Lord God, we adore you because you are close, accessible, and merciful. Thank you for, for helping us to cope with the things of this world. Holy Spirit, continue to teach us to depend on you, to trust on you, to hope in you, God. And bring your comfort to all the hearts who need it at this moment. In your name, Jesus, I 